I'm Mark Callahan, Mr. Saltwater Tank, and this is Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. March is known for St. Patrick's Day and the NCAA March Madness Basketball Tournament. And those things are okay, but this year I'm going to start my own March Madness event by setting up a brand new saltwater tank, and I'm bringing back my no-nonsense guides. That's right, you heard me correctly. In this episode of Mr. Saltwater Tank TV, I'm going to show you my brand new tank build, and to celebrate the birth of my new tank, I'm bringing back my no-nonsense guides for sale. Now, there's a twist to the guides this time because inside of the no-nonsense guide for setting up a saltwater tank volume one, I'm reworking all the videos to include footage from my new tank build. Now, my build is so fresh that I'm currently still editing the videos right now. Now, I'll teach you the concepts of what you need to know to set up a saltwater tank in the no-nonsense guides, and then I'll show you exactly how I applied them on my tank build. Now, to pick up your copy of the guides, follow the link at the bottom of your screen. And like I said earlier, I've got a brand new saltwater tank to show you in this episode of Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. So let's meet the newest member of the Callahan family. When I was first looking at what I was gonna go with for my new tank, I knew that the tank was gonna sit in the corner of the room at our new residence. Now I debated between a 72 inch long tank and a 60 inch long tank, and I chose the 60 inch long tank as it balanced better in the room. The 72 inch tank was simply gonna eat the room alive. For the maker of this tank, I chose Dutch Aquarium Systems. I used Dutch Aquarium Systems for my VIP client's tank build, and I was very happy with the tank. Add on a testimonial from a friend of mine who installs tanks for a living, as he's used Dutch Aquarium System tanks for 15 years and never had a problem with them, so I was sold all over again. When people found out on Facebook that I was gonna get a rimless tank, they said, whoa, 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 hang on, Mark. You said before that you don't like rimless tanks. So why in the heck are you then getting a rimless tank? Well, here's why. When I was working with Dutch Aquarium Systems, the maker of the tank, I said that I didn't want any bracing over the top of the tank, because bracing can be restrictive when you go to work in the tank, and it can create shadows when you go to light your tank. So therefore, I said, fine, just euro brace it. And they said, well, you don't have to euro brace it if you don't want to. I said, well, what do you mean? They said, if we go to three quarter inch glass, then you don't have to euro brace it as well. Now, by going to three quarter inch glass, I gave up getting Starfire because three quarter inch Starfire glass is very expensive. However, to me, I'm not sold on Starfire glass. It's not that big of a deal. So it wasn't a problem to me. I'd rather have a braceless tank as opposed to having Starfire on the front pane. So that's why I'm getting a rimless tank on this build. Now, I also decided to go for a rimless tank because of resale value. It'd be crazy to have a braceless tank that isn't rimless. So I said, what the heck? go ahead and make it rimless. Now, at some point, I might put a canopy on this tank. I'm gonna try it rimless for a couple months to see what I think. Now, since the tank is gonna be in the corner of the room and it's only gonna be viewable by two sides, I opted to turn the overflow box so that it's on the short wall of the tank. That left a less cluttered back wall of the tank for improved viewing. Now, this tank was big and it was heavy. Getting it off the trailer and into the house required several grown men and several pairs of suction cups. If you're ever going to move any sizable tank, I highly, highly recommend that you use suction cups. They made moving this tank possible. There's no way we could have done it without these cups. And once inside, the tank was leveled, leak tested, and then drained. For those of you who follow me on Facebook, when I posted the picture of my stand over at Dutch Aquarium Systems when it was being made, people are asking, why do you only have braces on two sides of your stand? Well, here is why. My tank is gonna be viewable by two sides, on the front and on the right side. That's because the tank, as you can see, is backed up in this corner, outside wall and another outside wall here. So when I started thinking about the stand, I said, there's no reason to leave these sides open because I'm not gonna be able to access that part of the stand anyway. My only access is from the front and from the side over here. So therefore I said, let's leave this part open so I can get in here and work in the sump and let's leave the side open as well because this is where I'm gonna replace and have my uh, top off containers and my uh, two-part solution containers here because with this tank I'm gonna have to have everything contained right underneath the stand my sump top off container two-part dosing everything for the tank It's got to fit right underneath it. I don't have the luxury of expanding into other rooms That's part of the reason why with a sump for this tank. I went for a slightly smaller one Now if, if you read my blog you follow me you know that I'm all about bigger is better especially downstairs if you haven't read that post follow the link at the bottom of your screen. So why did I not go all the way out? Well, again, because I gotta put my top off jug here and I gotta put my two part solution. So I had to leave room for those containers, which means I had to shrink the sump down. Not a big deal, I only lost about 10 gallons of volume in the sump, so I'm okay with it. 
Okay, back upstairs to the main display tank. On this tank, I chose Real Reef Rock. Now, I'll never start a tank with live rock, and the Real Reef Rock looks great. Plus, it isn't harvested from the ocean, which means I'm not destroying the reefs like I would if I use live rock. About 240 pounds of rock went into this tank, and I went for the two island look of aquascaping. I've got plenty of caves, shelves, and overhangs, as well as plenty of negative space for LPS and clams. Since I used dry rock and dry sand, I filled the tank with RODI water from my bulk resupply RODI unit. Now at 75 gallons per day, filling this tank was gonna take way too long, so I opted to upgrade the bulk resupply's water saving and 150 gallon per day upgrade kit. At 150 gallons per day, I filled the tank up in no time. Then I mixed in the salt, checked the salinity, got the temperature stable, and then it was time for the next big step. Now it's one of my favorite times of a tank build. It's time to cycle the tank. How are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna do it with damselfish. Er, wrong, I'm kidding. Whatever you do, don't cycle your tank with damselfish. Those guys are really cute, and yes, they're hardy, but they can get mean, and they're really good swimmers, so you'll probably never get them out of your tank other than ripping everything apart. So no damselfish when it comes to cycling your tank, as well as making this fish sit through a cycle is borderline torture. And they sit in there in ammonia and nitrite, things that are toxic to them. So don't just chunk fish in your tank and cycle them unless you're going to do it with Dr. Tim's one only nitrogen fine bacteria. Now you've seen this before in Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. I've used it with great success. Lots of you viewers have written in and said that you've used it with great success as well, so you can bet that I'm using it again. Now, if you want to find out the whole story on Dr. Tim's one and only nitrogen fine bacteria, follow the link at the bottom of the screen because I have a show, whole show on that. But for now, we've got the bacteria. I've got three blue, three, three blue-green chromuses right here, ready to go in the tank. The tank is stable at 77 degrees. Salinity is 1.025. We're ready to go. Dumping the bacteria, dumping the fish, and then I'm going to log for you every day the ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate levels so you can see just how quick we cycle this tank and how little of a cycle there is. So that, no more talking, stump in the bacteria, dump in the fish, and actually make this a saltwater tank with something living in it. Because staring at an empty tank, it's boring. This build is so new that I just added the fish a couple days ago. If you want to see how the ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate levels end up over the next few days, follow the link on your screen. You've probably noticed by now that my tank has no lighting over. So what lighting am I going to go with? Well, of course I'm going to go with LEDs, and I'm going to go with Ecotec's Radeon LED fixture. Now I used this on my 90 gallon, had fantastic results. I'm going to use it again on this tank. And my plan is to use four Radeons to start with, maybe going to five down the road if I feel that I need it. And I'm also going to play around a little bit with the lighting configuration. I'm going to put them all four in a line and see what I get, and then I'm going to try to mix it up. I'm going to try to put two over my one pile of live rock here, and then another two over the pile of live rock here. See what kind of spread I get, see what kind of difference it makes in terms of lighting the tank. And the cool thing is my landlord is actually building me the mounting brackets so I can hang the lighting right off the wall. Nothing like a landlord that loves a saltwater tank and wants to help you out. So I will be covering the lighting in a future episode of Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. For now, know that I'm going with Ecotech Radeon's LED fixtures over this tank. Every saltwater tank is different and I'm excited to see how this tank progresses. Now I'm gonna keep you updated on the tank on Mr. Saltwater Tank TV, on the build thread itself, and on Facebook as well. And remember, if you wanna pick up your copy of the No Nonsense Guides, including the reworked videos for the No Nonsense Guide Volume 1, follow the link at the bottom of the screen, because I'm only offering the guides until Thursday, March 8th at 12 p.m. Central Time, that's high noon. Again, if you wanna pick up the guides, follow the link at the bottom of the screen. If you wanna keep watching the build thread, follow the link on my page, to see how this tank progresses. Till next time, I'm Mark Callahan, Mr. Saltwater Tank. This has been Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. Have a good one, enjoy your tanks, and know your tank personality.